All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined from Pennsylvania by Ian Bauer. How are you doing, Ian? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and uh, uh, Ian is the owner at Graphic Rhythm Designs. And what we're going to talk about today is how graphic design impacts customer confidence in sales. And Ian, let's get right into it. I think uh, sales and other groups in an organization often see the, the graphic design, the marketing, the visual elements of all, oh, that's all nice, cool stuff that they do, but they don't often connect it to the impact that it has on, on customers and on prospects as well. Right, exactly, yeah. Um, I think that it's pretty underestimated by a lot of departments. Yeah. So, so when you're trying to educate people in your agency, when you're working with organizations, like how do you help them understand number one the power of it, and secondly, you know the the impact and how they can how they can make a bigger impact using good visual design? Well, I think that the the first thing is to kind of understand how graphic design can impact that confidence level, um, and. You know, you you think of like a customer working their way through a funnel or through your mm -hmm. your systems, um, and what they're looking for, especially ones that that uh, maybe are on the bubble a little bit, they're looking for a reason not to buy, right? And an inconsistent visual identity could create a, an experience where they're like, I'm not sure this is legitimate, or um, it seems like they don't have it all together, and that's when confidence fails, and they start to lose interest in pursuing you know, this deal or this business opportunity. And, and part of the uh, problem sometimes I think is, is because things become disjointed, especially if you see a company's identity and maybe their website or whatever, that they're constantly like maybe having to add things or, you know, new areas or whatever. And, and they start to lose the consistency of, of visual identity or bring in stuff that maybe jars with the rest. And we often kind of end up with this kind of mosaic. Right. Yeah. And that comes from um, kind of everybody doing their own thing or their own interpretation of the overall uh, visual identity of the brand. Um, and so, I mean, the, the, the solution to that is basically, you know, most of the brands that are really successful at this, even at smaller levels, have like a key holder who, you know, like they're the ones with the hammer that are going to hit you with it when, <laughs> when you stretch the logo or use the wrong shade of purple or, you know, something along those lines. Yeah. So how, how important is it to have those standards? Because oftentimes, you know, people will say, oh, well, you know, here's the uh, here's the graphic design guidebook uh, in large organizations. But in, in smaller organizations, those things tend not to exist in the same way. And so how important is it, as you said, for somebody to be there setting some boundaries and guidelines around it and, and enforcing, you know, the rules? Well, so actually, I think it's really important. Um, and there was a time where I would have said to uh, like a startup or a newer business, um, you know, hey, you know, you don't really have to worry about visual identity right now. But I've kind of changed my mind on it because of this idea of confidence and also this idea of hacking authority, where you can essentially appear to be a bigger, uh, more established uh, brand than you really are just by looking better, looking more polished. You know, if you think about it, like, you know, putting on a really nice suit and dressing the part when you're meeting with a client or something along those lines, it's the same idea for your brand. So it's important. And we, we are, we really do encourage, we work with a lot of like single member LLCs where, and you know, they, they're launching new products and stuff like that. And we do encourage them to get that visual identity guide done. You can do it. it you know, it's, it's an easy thing to get your hands on and then, um, you know, abide by it. Yeah, and when I look about what you just said, I just wrote that down. Hacking authority uh, um, is that, as you said, any anybody anybody can do it, and it allows you, as you said, to create the perception of maybe you're bigger than you are, etc. And and then that allows you to actually get in front of people, actually get meetings with people, and then you can pr prove the value that you can bring. But it's but leading with that, where it creates this confidence and i think that's what you're talking about as well it just creates confidence when you see when you see the visuals 
Right. Yeah. And, you know, there's this old adage, the fake it till you make it kind of mm -hmm. thing. And I don't always really like that. But, you know, what you're really you're faking is not even really the confidence. It's just, you know, you are appearing bigger. And, you know, that's such a good way to start off, you know, and especially when you're, you know, getting started, you know, it's a, it's a great way to kind of hack it. And let's face it, I mean, we live in a world of, you know, attention, shrinking attention spans and people getting used to just being bombarded with imagery and all of that. So it's almost become more important because let's face it, if you go to if you go to a site or you go to it on your on your your smartphone or whatever, and it's really old looking or old style or whatever, even if the company is really big and very established and all of that, you kind of go, hmm, I don't know about these people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a that's a great point. You know, if in today's world, especially, you know, if you're selling or working in any industries that are technologically driven, which a lot of them are, I mean, mm -hmm. online, digital sales, things like that, it's really important to make sure that you appear modern, that you appear fresh, and that you appear consistently that way, you know, the website looks good, the email signature, uh, you know, matches the same look and feel the proposal that you send out has that modern fresh look to it and it, it helps you present as a modern up to date in tune dialed in business and i love the fact um, that you mentioned proposals there as well because i think that's another area where a lot of people still don't understand that a proposal nowadays uh isn't just doesn't have to be just a a, a document with all these things in it that you know, you can have a you can have a visual image you can you can have a style a design you can embed you know images and videos you know a lot of it is done electronically and to be honest uh, we've even seen ourselves that when we put a lot of effort and focus into our proposals and made them very interactive, very engaging, very visual appealing. It makes a big, big difference. Yeah, exactly. And uh, technology is really empowering the, uh, the proposal space right now. Uh, like you said, embedding video, um, it's, and it's really easy to templatize it and then just swap in the content yep. that really drills in and dials down to your particular brand. There's, there's really a lot of cool stuff on the tech side. Um, uh, I was looking at a, a service the other day that you basically created like a, a um, motion graphic designed interactive web element and you could send people over to that and they could click and bo boxes opened up and videos played. And so there's some really cool stuff that you could do and design is at the heart of making that pulling it off the right way. Yeah, and I think that's that's I think that's an area where salespeople uh, start to see. Wow, there's there's a lot of advantage in this. I'm actually standing out a little bit when I send my proposals or when I send, or when I do my presentation, or whatever. That people are kind of reacting to it, and I think that's where they start to see the value. Yeah, and it, you know, I think of the word presence. You know, mm -hmm. we were familiar with the word presence and like the way that you are present and the and the presence that you have in a room. But there's also this idea of presence of the brand itself and the presence that, uh, you know, comes with a well-polished, um, you know, standard operating procedure for interacting with clients and following up and, you know, protocol for, you know, getting on calls and things like that. But then, of course, the design piece is there, too. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think more and more organizations are, are understanding that that needs to be a... a an integral part of it as opposed to just a nice to have or something that's bolted on at the end. I think this also uh, means Ian that, you know, graphic designers and marketing people need to interact more with salespeople and vice versa. Like they need to collaborate more. So they, they both understand what they need. Yeah. And it's interesting because um, I work with a lot of agencies like marketing agencies, and they're usually headed up by the head marketer, you know, who is yeah. also usually the head salesperson. Um, and they always get that. They always really, really get that. And when they, they come to us a, a lot of times with these sales proposals and say, Hey, we need to really make this look great. Like this has to look over the top and they really get that. And so when you have dedicated salespeople, sometimes maybe there's a disconnect and getting them in that frame of mind is a is a really helpful thing to do. Yeah, no, absolutely. Because uh, because sometimes a lot of sales people have been used to kind of throwing things together themselves or bypass or working with maybe marketing groups in the past that have been more rigid and they felt that they haven't got what they need. And that's why I think you know today this sales marketing alignment is so is so critical because you can't have 
you know, marketing producing, you know, great uh, design elements and great materials and all of that. And then sales going, no, no good. I'm going to just create my own. Yeah. And and I think there's also an element of um, speed, you know, uh, in sales, you know, you want to move quickly. If you, if now's the time to put something together and present it to a client, let's do it as quick as we can. Um, And so if your marketing and design teams can support them by having those assets pre-built, you know, and a good set of instructions for how to finish this thing off in the right way, then they can accomplish their goals of being quick and your goals of aligning with the brand and having a great presence. And it's a win-win solution for everybody. Yeah, and I think the, the the tools that are available to marketing and graphic designers and that today, I mean, allows them to move a lot faster than they used to. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and 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 if it's, you know small uh, you know small businesses actually have access to lots of people like you, lots of people look across the, the fact that nowadays, you know, particularly with being able to work with people remotely and virtually, it means that you know any organization of any size can find the right person that fits for them at that moment to help them with their design. Yeah. And that's kind of what we hang our hat on is this idea that, you know, businesses at all levels can access a good graphic designer or get support of a creative team, um, you know, to, to accomplish these goals. Yeah. And that's why, I mean, I'm, we're big advocates too of uh, go, go find the, go find the talent where you need it. And, and perhaps you don't need it all the time. Perhaps you need it, you know, uh, so being able to have, you know, contractors work with agencies, whatever it is, is uh, you can, you can really kind of tailor it to fit your budget, your needs. And as you say, at the same time, come out looking bigger than you are. Right. Exactly. I agree with that. Yeah. So what do you think, where do you see uh, the future of design going, particularly as it relates to, to sales and interacting with customers? Well, so it's interesting that you ask, because I've spent this entire week exploring basically that topic. Um, one of the things that we want to do in our agency is get into these cutting edge areas of design. You know, there's a lot of these companies that are building, like I said, these the interactive content, interactive proposals, um, you know, and they're really pushing the boundaries of programming and design at the same time. Um, And I really see that being the place that it's ultimately going to. And you could see that in the video, uh, video world, you know, there's these video, um, uh, what do they call them, like lead generation, you know, where you record a quick video of yourself and you send it out to a prospect and, you know, they can click and now they're on a specialized portal. But I I see it also in, um, you know, like we use a a web uh, program called Webflow. That's how we build all of our websites. And there are versions of that, these low code design intensive interactive content systems. And I really see that being the future of how things go, especially as they become more affordable to more people. Yeah, uh, no, absolutely, because we're seeing a lot of like low and no code solutions coming out in, in in a number of areas. I mean, we have one in our CRM that allows you to automate processes and it's pretty much no code. You know, you do it's drag it, well, it is no code, it's drag and drop. Uh, and I think that's that's where, as you say, a lot of places are going. However, obviously, on the flip side is when things get easier and the tools become more available you still need the design mouse and the and the eye for design to do it. So it's always, it's like, yeah, you can have the tool to do it yourself, but are you the best person to do it yourself? Right, yeah. And that's something that we often ca- uh, caution our clients with is, you know, don't try and be a designer. You do the thing that you're great at. Let the designer do the thing that they're great at. Yeah, because let's face it, and for most people, there's a kind of, uh, there's an inner designer trying to get out. And sometimes yeah. it's better off that they don't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my and, and you know it's funny because um, I'm not a designer, I, you know, uh, even though I, I run a design agency, and my team has definitely taken me aside and been like, "Why don't you just let us do that? You know, put the <laughs> put it down, just give it to us." <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah. I, yeah, no, it's funny when that happens when designers just go, "Yeah, I, I get where you're going with this," <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, but maybe let me finish it. Um, right. But yeah. So, yeah, but I think it. I mean, I think anybody who is not con- is not f- focusing or considering the design elements today, you're obviously running counter to the, how the whole world is operating because we're operating in such a such a visual and visual and interactive world. So what you were saying about the future of, you know, design, you know, being that kind of highly interactive, highly engaging, uh, and pushing the boundaries on that, I think that's going to it's going to be a fascinating world. 
Yeah, definitely. And, you know, there's there's a big drive towards video, too. We're seeing, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it was like, if you think about it, just look at social media for a minute, you know, the it, we started out with things like Facebook and Twitter, where everything was text based. And now that like the, the next platforms that came out were like Pinterest and Instagram. And now we're seeing things like TikTok and YouTube just blowing up where it's video. And so that's another area where I think that that's just going to keep doubling down. And even like even platforms like Amazon.com, they are pushing really hard towards video, uh, video reviews, video services, video listings. They're doing live video. So um, that's another place that I would definitely keep my eye on. Yeah, and and it's not that difficult to uh, working with the right people is to is to brand your video and to make sure your video also have your videos also have a consistency to them. Yeah, uh, you know, hire a motion graphic artist to do a logo indent and that you're miles ahead of everybody else just doing that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so I think you're right. I mean, the, the video is becoming so ubiquitous. Uh, but up to now, it's been, yeah, it's been like where people have said it's okay. Well, it doesn't really matter how it looks. It's more a question of getting it out there. I think now we're moving over to them. Yeah, it does matter how it looks. And the more you invest in that, the, the greater return you're going to get. Yeah, and it's interesting because I look at like YouTube channels that are launching, um, and I'm always really impressed with the ones that have launched and they're all they already look great, you know. And, and mm -hmm. you find a video and you're like, wow, you know, like this is their first video or a third video or whatever it happens to be, and they've really dialed it in. And so it it, it feels like uh, it feels like they're bigger and more established than they are, which is actually kind of the whole point. Um, and so that's you know, it's a competitive space and standing out. Uh, and everything that you do is is always going to be important. Yeah, yeah, no, it is. It's a, it's a very competitive space. Uh, listen, Ian, this has been this has been fantastic. You have some great, great insights for for people. Um, all of Ian's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, Ian, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and Graphic Rhythm Designs. Yeah, sure. So uh, Graphic Rhythm is a full stack graphic design agency. Like I said, I'm not a graphic designer. So we actually started the agency because um, I had graphic designers working for me and I happen to be pretty good at getting good results from them, which is something that a lot of the, my clients were struggling with because they just lacked the language and the, and the um, you know, the kind of the language, the, the language that they need to have those conversations with designers. So uh, we're a full stack design agency. Uh, we offer a subscription model if you need run of the mill daily graphic design. And we also can work with you on one-off projects like logo and visual identity, web design, uh, and coming soon motion graphics and video. So we're, we're trying fantastic. to be everything, everything our clients need us to be. Yeah, that's fantastic. And just an interesting note there. Yeah, uh, if you haven't worked or you haven't managed graphic designers before, um, just like managing, uh, software developers they're they're a certain kind of person and you have to know how to get the best out of them it's not always just a case of finding a graphic designer and and telling them what to do you have to know how to work with them yeah and even telling them what, how what to do can get hairy you know there's do's and don'ts and uh you could a really common thing that our clients uh, do and we have to reel them back from is what i call poisoning the well poisoning the well of creativity where they basically feed a bad idea to a graphic designer who feels uh compelled to like do what you said even though it's not the best thing you know and then you get frustrated because it doesn't look good and it's not really their fault i mean they should have said something but you know those are the kinds of conversations that we try and fix within our organization so that you get a better result yeah and i wouldn't underestimate how important that is uh, for those watching and listening i would absolutely underline that listen thanks ian as i said all ian's information will be below this video thank you all for watching and i will see you for another interview really soon thank you all right thanks for having me